Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today, I actually wanted to take a break from talking about the Reds, and I wanted to give some early thoughts about the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, training camp starts tomorrow in Dayton, and uh, there's a lot to get to when it comes to this team. Uh, first off, as everybody knows by now, Marvin Lewis is gone, replaced by former Rams coordinator Zach Taylor. Me, personally, I'm very excited to see what this guy can bring to the table. Uh, one thing that already that kind of stands out was I didn't realize that Marvin didn't have clocks at the practice fields, which, uh, you know, for timing and pace reasons, that just seems very odd to me. So overall, with, with Zach Taylor, this might take some time, but you know he has a patient owner, and I'm, in, I'm excited and interested to see what he can bring to the table. Now, he's a pretty young guy. He's only 36, so can he command the respect of the team? Uh, can he lead effectively uh, given some of the limitations of, we, of the organization? That remains to be seen, but it's a fresh start and a, a fresh departure from Marv, who, you know, every year before the games, it always posts, you know, the 0-7 playoff record and all that. So uh, glad to see them finally make the change. Uh, as for the team itself, I actually believe that they uh, still have a ton of really good skill players. Offensively, you have A.J. Green, who's coming up on the contract, so we'll see what happens with that. You have the recently uh, re-signed Tyler Boyd, uh, Tyler Eifert, you know, knock on wood with him, Joe Mixon, Giovanni Bernard, and then Andy Dalton, who, I mean, he is what he is at this point. I like the guy. He's a great man, great role model, maybe a slightly above average quarterback, but I you know, with Zach Taylor uh, in tow and, you know, some new coordinators, uh, I am interested interested to see what he can do. Um, I did read that he spent his offseason watching every offensive play from the Rams, so he is preparing, as I know he will, and it'll be fun to see the changes from Marv to Zach and uh, farther on down the coaching staff. Uh, I will say, though, the offensive line uh, will probably be a very big problem with this team. They already lost their one pick for the season. Uh, Clint Bowling retired a few weeks ago, so this team is going to have to rely on a lot of inexperience and you know guys like Bobby Hart who weren't very good last year. On the other side of the ball, defensive line, you still have your anchors and Atkins and Dunlap. Uh, linebacker crew, they addressed this in the draft. Uh, I don't think this is a particularly outstanding unit of the team. And then in the defensive backfield, they have Jesse Bates, who I'm excited to see him progress. Uh, William Jackson, who did really well two years ago, uh, came on as uh, last season progressed. Uh, and so those are two of the main guys uh, on defense. And then Darquez Dernard, Drake Kirkpatrick, and others. So uh, a lot of people don't have uh, high hopes or expectations for this team. Most national pundits think they'll finish last in the division. You have the resurgent Browns, you know, the Steelers and the Ravens. And, you know, it's fair enough. Uh, it's, it's not unreasonable to think that way, uh, given all the changes and plus some of the issues that this team has. You know, I'm not going to be mad and call them haters or anything. So uh, I, I hope they can surprise people. Uh, I do think that the talent's in place. If they can stay healthy and how they adapt to the new, new coaching schemes, that remains to be seen. I don't think their schedule is super tough, but, you know, when teams play the Bengals, they probably feel the same way. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I'll get more into this as time goes on with specific issues, but I want to give some of my early thoughts about the team as a whole. Anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.